Good evening. On October the 7th, which is this Wednesday, we celebrate the Feast of Our Lady of the Rosary. And the Bishop will host a diocesan celebration of the Rosary to honor our Blessed Mother on Wednesday, October 7th at 7 p.m. at St. Dominic's Church. St. Anthony's has been asked to recite the second glorious mystery, the Ascension of the Lord, in English. If you are able to attend and lead one decade of the Rosary, say a uh, beginning prayer and a um, one prayer of the faithful. Would you please talk to me or to Monsignor Pat after Mass? I would like to give an opportunity to someone who might enjoy doing that. If not, I guess I have to do it. Today's liturgy, oh, there's one more thing I wanted to mention. It's in our bulletin, and I know we have so few bulletins these days, but I did want to say our thanks to Lynn and Julie Ellery, who have volunteered to become part of the baptismal preparation team. Len and Julie will be facilitating the week one prep course for new parents. So thank you very much for your uh, generosity. Today's liturgy celebrates the 27th Sunday of Ordinary Time, and our Mass is being offered for Paulette Sibalski by Bob and Joseph Sapurin by the family. Good evening. This evening is a very special evening for Maria and Scott Moody, who join us with their families and friends to receive Jesus, the bread of life, for the very first time. Scott and Maria are called in a very special way through this celebration to deepen the relationship with Jesus. And so it is with great joy that we begin our celebration this evening. Please stand to welcome Monsignor Pat. vanished away see in this space our fears and our dreamings brought here to you in the light of this day gather us in the lost and forsaken gather us in the blind and the lame call to us now and we shall awaken we shall arise at the sound of are a mystery, we are the old who yearn for your face. We have been sung throughout all of history, called to be light to the whole human race. Gather us in the rich and the haughty, gather us in the proud and the strong. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good evening, everyone. It seems that we have to have a weekly blooper. That song played very well at home when I played it at home. It even had a guitar solo, electric guitar solo. And Welcome to everybody here this evening. Good to have everybody here. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. 
Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Let me sing for my beloved my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out a wine vat in it. He expected it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now the inhabitants of Jerusalem and the people of Judah judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I expected it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge, and it shall be devoured. I will break down its walls, and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste. It shall not be pruned or hoed, and it shall be overgrown with briars and thorns. I will also demand, also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his pleasant planting. He expected justice, but saw bloodshed, righteousness, but heard a cry. The word of the Lord. The response, the vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. You brought a vine out of Egypt and drove out the nations and planted it. It sent out its branches to the sea and its shoots to the river. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. Why then have you broken down its walls so that all who pass along the way pluck its fruit? The boar from the forest ravages it and all that move in the field feed on it. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. Turn again, O God of hosts, look down from heaven and see, have regard for this vine, the stalk of your right hand planted. Then we will never turn back from you, give us life, and we will call on your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts, let your face shine that we may be saved. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, Whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worth, worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the priests and the elders of the people, listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized the slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son, saying, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, He will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus begun, begins with, listen to another parable. And he begins to tell the story of the vineyard. The, the chief priests and the elders whom this is aimed at would have recognized this parable right off the bat. It's a parable that comes from the book of the prophet Isaiah. When he was talking about the house of Israel, and so they would have been on their guard immediately after when Jesus says, the owner has a pair of landowner who planted a vineyard. And they would say, well, wait a minute. I think I recognize this story. And as he goes through it, we can recognize in this a modification of the story of Israel. Sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. Other slaves, those would be the prophets and the leaders, and the judges that he has sent. Then he sent his son. Well, do we have a hard time figuring out who that is? If you do, you're in the wrong church. He sent his son. They will respect my son. And they said, they killed him. They threw him out, and they killed him. And we know what happens to Jesus. So at the end of that story, he says, what will the owner do to these tenants? And they say he'll put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who give him the produce at harvest time. And at the end of that story, Jesus says, Therefore I tell you, the kingdom will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. Now, unfortunately, we, we can look at this story and get very self-righteous and think, those cotton-picking elders, those chief priests, and those Pharisees, they are such terrible people that they didn't recognize Jesus and that they found some way of getting him put to death. Aren't they awful? 
if that's where we wanted to leave this parable, we could get away with that, but it's not a very good conclusion. Because there's a caution here for us, for you and I. The kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. So we have to ask ourselves, we are the new tenants. We are the new tenants. However, we do have to be honest and ask ourselves the most difficult question. Are we producing the fruits of the kingdom? Are we doing God's work? Or are we just kind of, being, eh, what's the big deal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'll come and do this, a little bit of this, and a little bit of that. No big deal. If we take this for granted, what do we think is going to transpire here? What happened to the last tenants? And why do we think that our fate as tenants, if we don't produce the fruits of the kingdom, will be any better? Do we not get the message that this, this vineyard that has been granted to us by God is not automatic and it's not something that we should take for granted? We are stewards and stewards only. This vineyard does not belong to us. We have been asked to take care of it. How are we doing with that? Are we planting good fruit? Are we planting fruits of compassion, of love, of understanding, of caring? What kind of fruits are we producing? Because if we're not producing the fruits of the kingdom, should we not be at least a little bit concerned or worried? And I think the answer to that is, you bet your sweet bippy. We need to take this more seriously. We need to examine ourselves and say, is this what I'm doing? Am I producing the fruits of the kingdom? Or do I think there's nothing for me to do here? I just have to get through my life, and, you know, look after number one, and then move on. Is that what Jesus told us we have to do? Is that the fruits of the kingdom? Not likely. Not likely at all. And yet, it is an awful temptation for us, isn't it? We get into these dire situations that we are now, this very concerning and worrying situation. And what's our, our temptation? I will look after me. As long as I'm looking after me, I'm good. And Jesus says, uh, 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 uh. It's not just about looking after you. We have to look after each other. We have to be concerned about each other. And we have to do those things that care for each other and keep each other safe. We have to produce the fruits of the kingdom. That is now our job. And how are we doing it? our profession of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting.
with faith in our God, the giver of every good gift. Let us bring our needs before the Lord. For bishops, priests, and deacons, may they be faithful stewards of the church and serve the people of God with integrity. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in government authority, may they practice civil discourse, advocate for truthful and transparent leadership. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those lacking access to education, especially girls, Women, may they find resources and discover avenues to pursue their goals, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all members of the parish community, may each of us use our gifts and talents to build up the church and to care for those in need, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish community, especially for the sick, for those who are grieving the loss of a loved one, for the lonely, for those who have no one to pray for them, and for all their intentions, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Hold in our hearts, God and Maria, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. God of wisdom and love, in you we find peace that surpasses all understanding. Hear our prayers that the work of our hands might build up the kingdom of God and help to spread your peace throughout the world. We ask this through Christ our Lord. And let's hope this one works better than the last one. Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father.
Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your command, and through the sacred mysteries, may we celebrate with dutiful service, gracious, which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness, Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by setting down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. <clears throat> In a similar way, when supper was ended, we took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The first proclamation, the mystery of faith. We proclaim... Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Serge, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Anthony of Padua, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, 
we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. I would like to call Maria and Scott to come forward with their family and friends to receive Jesus, the bread of life, for the first time.
Monsignor Pad will now present First Communion Certificate to Maria. And Scott. Let us build a house where love can dwell and all can safely live. A place where saints and children tell how hearts learn to forgive. Built of hopes and dreams and visions, rock of faith and vault of grace. Here the love of Christ shall end divisions. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Stand as we 
I think I'm going to bring this over and perform an exorcism on it later. Let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume through Christ our Lord. And a reminder that this is the first Sunday of the month, so the ushers will be at the back of the church to accept the offerings for the poor. And I got a com comment. The one collection that did not go down much during COVID, our collection for the poor. For some reason or other, that stayed right up there, so I'm very proud of you. Well done. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God.